Hello, Koopos! We're back again! And yes, for those of you who have been staying on the stream, I know this is like deja vu. <laughs> Leave it to our masters to do things live and then mess it up, right? So we got to redo it again. We're going to edit the first, I think it was like 12 minutes of this or so. Uh, we had some audio problems with Jeff and uh, we wanted to redo the intro because we want to give him a, an appropriate intro. And what, wait, what are we talking about? We're redoing this, right? Yeah, so today's stream, we are doing, we are interviewing someone for the very first time on our Masters Live. I'm super excited about that. Um, we're gonna let Jeff do his intro one more time. I gotta give a shout out to Crow for helping us with this, with getting the audio set up. You know what, Crow, appreciate you so, so much. I love this community. You are all so amazing. Uh, really quickly before we transition again over to Jeff and he does his intro, I gotta mention, of course, uh, to please remember to like, subscribe, follow all that jazz. Let's get the community growing. Let's get this channel growing. Next thing, of course, betterhelp.com, mental health. Take care of yourself. Also, get vaccinated. I've done it. Others have done it. It's fine. It shows love to yourself, shows love to others. I gotta talk about that, of course. Uh, next, please join the Discord because we do giveaways. Hey, good thing I redid this because I forgot to mention this last time. Uh, and then lastly, I got to give a shout out to those that support this community. We got Zulus, of course, here in Seattle area, which is, they are just amazing. We got the Light Games, Gregory's, fantastic. And then we got Trading Card Game Pit, which I remembered the name this time. They are a fantastic group. Go check them all out. Links to their stores in the video link description. I'm done talking. We've got the stream set up. We are good to go. Let's do this and let's do this right, finally. <sighs> okay. Let's begin. Okay, Jeff, and we're back for round two. Thank yeah. you so much, what? sir. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, hanging tight again. Yeah, so really quickly, once again, how are you doing, Jeff? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm having a good, good day. I'm glad to be here. I'm always happy to connect with uh, other people in the community, be able to talk to everybody. And uh, <laughs> so this is really nice. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much again, Jeff, for doing this, for taking the time. So uh, for those of you that don't know, Jeff is uh, a competitive player. And not only is he a competitive player, he, al he also writes for Crystarium. I hope I said that correctly, uh, yeah, yeah. which there is links uh, to that in the video link description. In fact, I'm linking straight to one of his latest art articles, which we'll talk about here during the interview, of course. Uh, go check out his works. He writes wonderful stuff. But you know what? I'm going to let him introduce himself a little bit, brag about himself just a bit. Jeff, what have you done as a pro player and as a writer? Go for it. So uh, my um, tournament repertoire in uh, 2019, I went to the uh, Water Crystal Cup in Oregon. I managed to make top four and uh, I successfully, I got a, an invite to nationals. Cool. Which uh, I... Uh, I went to nationals that year and I barely missed day two on tiebreakers. So I was very happy with uh, a uh, uh, my showing there. Uh, I had been hoping to do better in the 2020 season. And as I'm sure you can imagine, that didn't exactly happen. But uh, as we've had yeah. uh, online yeah. events this year, I managed to top four the Xanarkand Open, uh, awesome. which had about... Uh, 100 players. I was very happy with that. And then uh, the uh, League of Light, I managed to make top 16 in that. Which That's uh, awesome. Is also that is super, happy. super awesome. Yeah. Wow. Good job on all of that. Um, as I've mentioned to you before, Jeff, and other viewers on this channel here, I myself used to be pro Yu-Gi-Oh player back in the day. And those of you who've ever played a TCG, uh, specifically, I guess, TCG and a pro level, um, it is. it takes a lot of work, a lot of commitment. Um, uh, the the type of people out there with the different kinds of decks you got to be prepared for everything it's it's something else so all of that is just a wonderful accomplishment uh that you uh sort of have done so that's really cool so you do know your stuff you know a little bit what you're talking about here <laughs> um and so tell us how long have you been writing for crystarium a little bit I think my first article was around October or November of 2018. So oh, okay. we're coming up on my three year anniversary pretty soon. Oh, yeah. very cool. Very cool. Okay. So the Crystarium start uh, about a couple years after FFTCG started or did it? Or yeah, it, just it kinda... did. Okay. Yeah, it did. Um, uh, it was sort of like, a, um, 
Rob Meadows and Jared Wallace and I and uh, a couple of Jared other Wallace. people in yeah. uh, Team Flat Earth. Uh, it was as we were coming together and sort of sort of picking our team that we decided, you know, we wanted to have a spot to be able to write, to be able to uh, share our thoughts with other people. And uh, it was really important to us that it, it's not monetized in any way. It's all free. It's all, uh, you know, what we believe in. We write what we want, when we want. And so you can you can trust that, you know, none of it is from a place of like, we're trying to make money or we're trying yeah. to take advantage of anyone in any way. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just us trying to connect with the community and get That's back amazing. to the people and share and, you know, have this really open dialogue with everybody. That's super awesome, Jeff. I like that. Yeah, I was reading a little bit about uh, uh, on the site, the, the, the about page there, and it, I love how it focused a lot for those who want to get in the competitive scene or on the competitive yeah, scene yeah. and just read those articles. What's interesting about that is that a lot of the articles that I have read, some of the other stuff, uh, Jared Wallace, of course, like you just mentioned, I've read some of mm -hmm. uh, some of his stuff. I, I don't know him, but I've read some of his stuff. Um, but uh, it's nice that or, or have I met Jared? I don't know. Maybe have I? Is he coming to Zoom? I don't believe so. No, okay. no, no. He, he doesn't. Uh, he used to live in Seattle. But okay, he's in just Japan making now, sure. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm so bad at remembering names. I'll try to introduce you. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of the articles, which are great, and I highly recommend people go there. It's it, it's it's for anybody at really any level. Um, some of them obviously will take, you know, you need some TCG knowledge, but a lot of them are pretty easily um, digestible. And there's just a lot of really good, helpful nuggets of wisdom in fact if you play a competitive game in general there are some other really great stuff um in there that um that can apply to some other games uh i want to talk really quickly uh here on my notes here um about your recent article uh which is in defense of net decking yes as soon as i saw that article i i was like oh my gosh Finally, I know, I'm sure somebody else has talked about it at some point in time, um, <laughs> but it is such, at, at the time, I remember when I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day, and I, I, when I first started Yu-Gi-Oh! it was like in 2000, and Yu-Gi-Oh! was like four years old or so, and net decking was such a hot topic. It, you, you couldn't talk mm -hmm. about net decking. People got so angry at it, um, and, you know, it, it was like seen as like, you're a counterfeiter, you know, you're copying my strategy. How dare you? How dare you do this? Go figure out your own thing. Uh, and I have always been, I ad admit, I've always been a net decker, or I guess back then I didn't have internet. I was, I'd go to a tournament, I'd see who won, and then I'd copy as much as I can that deck. <laughs> For sure. Um, but you, um, you said something here, which I really, really liked here, uh, is uh, what I am good at. I'm sorry, here, actually... Um, when I said earlier that not everyone likes deck building, I am including in that statement, uh, I hate deck building. I don't even pretend to be good at it. Uh, what I am good at is taking an existing build and finding bits and pieces of it to improve. I love that. So tell us a little bit, what inspired you to write this? What, why did you feel like this was an important thing to get out to the community? So, uh, a lot of the decks that I've had success with my, um, uh, the deck that I played at the 2019 Water Crystal Cup and yep. the deck that I played at the uh, Xanderkind Open were both yep. net decks that I had played for months and yep. months and had slowly, um, you know, come to the point, it had gotten to a point where I was extremely comfortable with them and I, I had mm. adjusted them over time to fit my style and to fit the meta. But, I mean, they were net decks to begin with. That's, you know, what they started off Interesting. As. Very uh, interesting. You know, I, I like to play a lot of different net decks. Uh, one, to, to get a good idea of what decks are going to be good for me. But two, to understand what other people are playing. Yeah. And I think that that's really important to get a good understanding uh, yourself of what thoughts are going through your opponent's mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very, and that's a really wonderful way to look at it. And I think uh there's a little bit of um of a little bit of a lesson of, of humility honestly i think and even with what you just said in that statement there's a bit of humility in that of being able to say you know what um maybe i'm don't know you know what the best deck is or i'm i'm not that good at it let's see what the top people are playing 
let's understand it, let's build it, let's play it, and then let's improve to it to a thing that kind of fits my style as well, you know? Uh, and that does take a bit of humility. Um, so there was uh, a few years ago, I believe it was, uh, a nice documentary about Magic the Gathering. And they talked about the history of Magic the Gathering and the very first tournament that happened and these big players. And what ended up happening at this tournament were these two top players uh, basically were running kind of around the same deck. One of the players, furious, saying, I came up with that. That was my idea. The other player, you know, no, I came up with it. And it created this tension. And for a while there in TCG communities, and Magic and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, which were, you know, pretty much the early on really big ones. Um, well, more so Magic and Pokemon, I'd say. Yu-Gi-Oh uh, was kind of eh, at first, kind of floundered there. But there was such a heated debate over that idea. And uh, and it's just, it's so nice that we've come such a long ways now where we actually encourage people to net deck. And I find that your article definitely is one that encourages people to go out there net deck and especially if you don't have that time or you're just not that good a net you know uh, uh, of a deck builder yeah. uh that's really nice um there's another there, statement there, here you said uh quick, some people i'm sorry go ahead go ahead yeah, uh, there's two things that i just want to say real quick about net decking i don't know that i mentioned in the article uh one i, I just want to say like if net decking isn't your cup of tea by all means do what do what feels right for you um if you want to make your own stuff I strongly encourage it. You know, uh, I think that net decking, even even in that situation, is good for knowing what your opponent does. Yeah. But if you want to play what you believe in, your own stuff, absolutely go for it. Uh, and then the second thing, yeah, I think that net decking someone isn't. I, I think that a lot of people think of it like, oh, they stole my idea. But I, I feel like it's a compliment. Yes. You know, like, yes. oh, you've got a great deck. I want to see what you were doing. I yes. want to experience the same thing. You know, I want to connect with you. Yes. That, that's, that's, that, that's one of the things. Very, that very well said. Very, yeah. very well said. No, that's, that's actually so true. Uh, that's amazing, Jeff. Okay, actually, and that kind of actually counted with the next thing I want to say. But let's go ahead and move on from that, from the next thing here. Um, let's talk about the current state of the game of Final Fantasy TCG. What are your thoughts right now on on the state of things? Do you think it's it's going well? Do you think there's some longevity to the TCG? There are some people that are are kind of on the fence on it. It's not that old of a TCG. Uh, it reminds me right now from when I listen to others in the community, uh, specifically on Reddit and on the you know on Facebook and, and Twitter. I, I feel like a lot of the statements, uh, and in fact, even some some people locally, uh, not so much at Zulus, but at some other local places, I've heard of how people are, you know, kind of in this, oh, it's dead, died in the water, uh, we don't support it, play Magic, play Pokemon. And it reminded me of when I first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! back in 2000. At the time, I was four years old. I walked into a few LGSs, same bit. It's dead, no good, you know, play Magic, look at Pokemon. So what are your thoughts right now on the current state of, of, of Final Fantasy? You mentioned that it's 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 new, it's relatively new. But uh, in terms of TCGs, it's ancient. Oh, uh, what do you most mean? TCGs, most TCGs die within the first year. And so just by the fact that it's, uh, what, four years old at this point? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's older than 90% of all the TCGs out there. And, you know, maybe that isn't a, a, a great indicator of its health moving forward. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, when we look at strong metrics like every single set sells out uh um, that's true uh yeah. i don't i don't think it's going anywhere uh, sure there are a lot of areas where its popularity waxes and wanes and maybe a local scene you know dies but at the same time another local scene is cropping up somewhere else and so i think that a lot of the um uh doom and gloom about it can be from a perspective of you know oh my local scene died and and you know that's really unfortunate and i and i i my heart goes out to anyone who can't play the game because of yeah. that but i think that there are a lot of places where it's going strong and i yeah. think that on a national level 
and on a global level that it's managing to continue to do well. And as long as long as it continues to sell out, we're going to continue having the game. Yeah, good points there. Um, what do you think about so far with with the tournaments, with the more official Square Enix type of tournaments? Do you do you like the way they are right now? Do you think Square Enix can do something better in terms of uh, maybe not necessarily the formats because there's a lot of formats, but maybe uh, prizing, uh, you know, um, some things they can do, especially going forward when we get out of this zombie apocalypse. Absolutely do. Uh, I don't think that they will. And I don't think that, uh, you know, you can always improve, but I don't think that they believe that encouraging a thriving competitive scene is going to drive sales. Mm. Uh, and if I'm honest, I, I think they're right. You know, uh, if I'm, if I'm being realistic, it, yeah, they can absolutely do better, but I don't think they have any incentive to, um, that's a good and point. so if if that prizing is is something that uh, people are really looking for, then you know, prepare to be disappointed. But uh, <laughs> yeah, for for those that are that are in it for the love of the game and who who really enjoy just competing, then then it's you know the the prize isn't something that's going to be uh, driving driving them. So, you know, it's kind of a weird situation, but uh, I don't know. It's a complicated situation, you know, and I, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's great. It just is what it is, you know. And so that's fair enough. Now, you're, of course, so for those of you that don't know, so Jeff is also a Magic player um, and I, you've been playing Magic, I'm sure. Uh, how long have you been playing Magic for, actually? Uh, I played it for about 20 years. I started in 95 okay. and nice. I ended about the time that i started playing final fantasy so nice Final okay yeah, yeah okay do you have any of those black lotuses keep those safe <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, i do have a few reserve list cards nothing quite that oh. <laughs> nothing quite that lucrative yeah um so what's interesting though is a lot of people like to continue you know magic is kind of the the golden child kind of the thing that people like to compare everything to uh, which yeah. it makes sense, right? Magic was kind of the beginning. They started it all. Um, well, I'm sure there were other things, but Magic really was a, it's like kind of like the, it was definitely the first TCG. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. And this game is like the rules are 85, 90% Magic, you know? So yeah. it's. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of that similarity. Yeah. Um, there. yeah. Yeah. But what I wanted to say was that a lot of people, you know, like to um, compare everything of magic in terms of how tournaments should be ran, how formats should be held uh, and how prizing should be, uh, you know, again, going back to, and forgive me, I have to keep bringing up Yu-Gi-Oh because that's the thing I knew mostly is that, you know, back in the day when Yu-Gi-Oh was really just starting to grow in terms of its tournaments, uh, people were always frustrated that they only got uh, this, uh, you know, unique prize card and uh, mm -hmm. upset that they couldn't win money. Everybody wanted money, you know, um, but do you think that Square Enix at any point would have that motivation outside, say like, what do you, okay, actually let me better phrase this. What do you think it would take for Square Enix to maybe get to a point to maybe do some sort of money prize or some sort of like even a unique card because there is value in just that unique card, you know, as a prize? Um, I don't think because this game appeals so strongly to collectors i i, I just honestly don't think that that's on their radar at all mm. uh i think i think that's their market i think they know that's their market yeah. um and uh yeah i don't i don't think that appealing to the tournament scene is on their list of priorities, which, which I, you know, I don't fault them for. I don't. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. It is at the end of the day, yeah. just a business, you know, yeah, as long as it's selling. It'd be, it'd be nice if it was, but you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm a reasonable man. I understand. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, it, it, it makes, it does make total sense. It's a business. It is yeah. looking as long as it's selling the product. And honestly, yeah. I think as long as the product continues to sell, we will continue to get more TCG stuff. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and perhaps, perhaps the tournament scene is the side effect in the sense, you know, of, of, yeah. the, of the game, you know? 
I feel I feel like I'm being really really harsh on them, but I like no, I feel that's fair. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm I happy with things the way that they are. I, like, yeah. I understand other people's frustrations mm -hmm. with uh, some of the tournament stuff, but I've, I've always been um, really happy with yeah. uh, going to tournaments. Uh, I like I like all of the tournaments that I've been to. Um, they've had little hiccups here and there, but uh, it's really rare that uh, anything major, um, you know, really really occurs I, i've always had a, an enjoyable time so i don't i just want to make sure like i'm not coming <laughs> across course, yeah. Harsh. yeah no and i and those are all fair statements uh you know they're, they're realistic statements you know i think we when we are so passionate about something we want it to always be more but it is a it is a good reminder to remember yes. that square enix is just a business at the end of the day and as long as they're selling product um you know they will continue to do what they do uh and if you know They'll, they'll, they will, I think, I believe just like with any business is if they see these sellouts continuing to happen, they will perhaps increase production later on down the road and maybe do a little bit more to continue to, to, uh, increase profit. But, you know, just Hopefully like with any... once, once we get further away from, uh, the difficulties of coronavirus, yes. we'll be able to see that increase in production. Cause I know that things have been very hard there. And yeah. I know that especially, um, international shipping has been oh. a, yeah. a nightmare yeah. for, not just not just cards but everything so. oh yeah oh yeah of yeah. course yeah okay well um so how about uh your let's talk a little bit now about opus 14 opus 14 is coming out here really soon i'm excited mm -hmm. about it um what do you think how, how are you feeling about opus 14 in general first uh it looks really interesting i think that it's going to have a lot of cards that have a uh, dramatic impact i think that it's going to have a lot of cards that have subtle impact I think that for a draft format, it's it's going to be very unique because there's so many cards in it that mm. encourage a, a mono element deck build. And I, I'm really interested to see how feasible that is in draft where you're able to get something like a like a 25-15 split. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I think I think uh I think highly of the set and I'm excited to get my hands on it. Sure. Yeah, there's some great cards in that set. Um, I think for sure, uh, I think the collectors are definitely going to be going after that full out full art cloud, of course. Yes. But yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, but on the competitive scene, I also believe that that cloud is just a very powerful card. Um, so how about uh, your favorite cards? Let's get how, what are your top two or three cards out of that uh, out of the Opus 14? You think are going to be um, not necessarily more for the collector, but more for for the game uh, that's going to be really beneficial, perhaps meta defining. Sure. Uh, the the cards that I, I, I personally am most excited for uh, are um, Gutsko is, I think, just absolutely insane. The uh, three CP fire thief that uh, whenever he enters the field or attacks, you remove the top card of your deck. And then whenever he leaves the field, you get all of the cards that he uh, that he got back. I. Uh, you can play him off of Magissa, which is a card that I have used extensively, and he just, uh, if he's not answered immediately, he promises to get you just a ludicrous amount of value, especially in Fire, where you're yeah. able to just eliminate anything that can yeah. get in his path, and he can attack and attack and get his trigger over and over, yeah. and uh, just the longer that you're able to stick him, uh, the better he is. I think that yeah. he's going to be uh very i think he's going to be one of my go-to cards for this set he looks really cool yeah this card um is disgusting i think it's it's definitely one of my my favorite card it's probably i would say my second favorite card in the set when i read this i was like why the freak is this a hero card shouldn't this be a legend um there's like no it feels like the the dark um cloud of darkness the starter one except way better oh yeah yeah and there's no loss of c there's no loss of cp in this you're gonna make up for it um unless it gets like you know negated in some way uh yeah, yeah it's this just i think cards like this that just let you uh basically do plus one you know it's they're just insane these it's just an insane card um, you know, the power 7k isn't bad for three costs. Um, 
Yeah, do you think a card like this will go well, will fit well in multi-element with fire? Or do you think it's just like specifically to mono? What do you what do you kind of foresee this playing well? Do you just think it's just a good generic throw it in there if you're running fire? If you can clear the way for his attacks, then I think you can run this card if you're also in fire. So if you're in um yeah, Fire Lightning, especially, is going to have mm. a lot of uh, ways to clear yeah. your opponent's stuff. Uh, Fire Ice tends to have a lot of dull effects that can let him swing through again and oh again. Oh my gosh, yes. So, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, you're making me... Oh my gosh, already I'm thinking like Fire like, Ice, uh, Earth Build, yeah. maybe, something like that. Yeah. Fire Wind, if you can stick a Chalinka on him oh, and swing twice right. in one turn. You know? <laughs> There's all sorts of cute things that you can do. So yeah. I'm excited to try all kinds of different ridiculous that's true right yeah or could or have could dodge yeah. come in there and dull and then attack and the dodge disappears and yeah 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 oh well, my Kadaj gosh can even give him plus 2k and brave and make it so he can swing into that's you true. Know, stuff that he couldn't normally yeah. that's true that is true i yeah. keep forgetting about that 2k and brave from Kadaj. <laughs> mm -hmm. well what, okay so uh so we got gusco there what else uh is kind of top of your list there one card I'm really excited for, and I, I don't know that it's going to work out, but I am going to find out. I'm absolutely going to find out is Larsa. Larsa is so cool. Oh, the gosh. ability that finally, 14 sets in, the ability to interact with your damage yeah. zone, even just a little bit, is so cool. Yes. And, uh, yes, it is. You know, he, he rewards. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Deck building. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I always really enjoy cards that encourage you to, uh, you know, have these specific builds. And so, you know, trying to fit as many EX into your deck yeah. as you can is a style of build that is uh, very near and dear to me. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm excited. I think that with just a little bit of stretching, you can get to 35 EX bursts pretty yeah. reasonably in Water Fire. And so um, I'm very excited. Um, yeah, that yeah, so yeah. Seeing this card, it, it was nice to see the um, these more like uh, kind of plays that reach out not just to the damage zone, but what I'm hoping about cards like like again that Gusco that's like interacting even to with the remove from play kind of stuff. You know, um, yeah. It's so it makes me super duper happy to see stuff like this. Um, I'm looking forward to running this again with, um, what's the name of the, the card? Uh, it, it, Axtar, right? It, it's what it is that lets you reactivate right. your experts, right? Yeah, yeah. It lets you double up on your EX bursts and then searches out another FFBE character. And that lets you get yeah. uh, Citra, yeah. who has EX. Yeah. And uh, I just feel like the deck really uh, comes together quite nicely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, what I'm looking forward to is doing a thing like... Um, you know, you act star and then you don't, maybe you don't like what you got out there. Um, and so then you, um, you know, you're, you, uh, you, you basically tell yourself, well, um, I don't like my options right now. Let's trade stuff out, you know, and then let's, let's activate it. Um, yeah. Love this card. Uh, yeah. it's definitely in my top three, not personally, not my top, my top one yet, but yeah. Oh, um, fair. it's good to know that I'm in line with you, Jeff. I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at the game. <laughs> Cool, cool. I've certainly learned a lot from you and from a lot of the players over there at Zulu's. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Yeah, um, and how about one more? Let's go with one more. All right, the last one is 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 my personal pick. I don't think he's very good, but he's cool, and he's Jekt. And oh, uh, G I love, yeah, Jekt, I yeah. love Jekt. Jekt is my favorite character in all of Final Fantasy. Oh, I'm interesting. Always, I'm always excited to see him. Every Very time he shows up, no matter what form he shows up, whether he's a giant monster or a different giant monster, or uh, if he has one of the best specials that we have ever seen in the game. Yeah, so let's read that special really quick. Actually, let's read the card. So we have it up here. It's when yeah. Jack enters the field, you choose one forward. If one or more forwards were attacking this turn, return the chosen forward to its owner's hand. Uh, if three or more forwards were attacking this turn, break the chosen forward and draw one card instead. Okay. Uh, and then the Jack to block. Uh, what a name. <laughs> uh, choose uh, any number of summons, auto abilities, action abilities, or special abilities and cancel their effects. You know, 
It's about With time. No additional cost, just the S. Yeah. Just the S. Yes. No extra CP, nothing. Yes. Just... yes. Yes. Uh, what are the other, so what's the other Jack cards that, that are good that run well with this then, that you think could run well with this? Or maybe, none, or maybe just these Jack them. cards. None oh. of them. So just yeah. one, you're saying, so max out on Jack Opus 14. Yeah. 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 I think, I, I think this there, is great. Yeah. There, I think if you're in water fire, it, it's all, there's always, it's always tempting to try and make room for one of the Opus 7 Jack, the one mm. that, uh, if you're at four damage, he's cheaper. And when he enters play, if you're at two damage more than your opponent, he just straight up hits your opponent for one damage, just right then and there. Oh. Um, he's always tempting, uh, especially to me, of course, because I love Jekt. So I think, you know, having a singleton of him might not be too bad. But uh, even in uh, other shells like uh, Water or Earth, you can run Kusith and mm. suddenly have yeah. instant access to your S. Yeah. Um, so uh i i just think he's really cool yeah that's awesome <laughs> well you know what jeff thank you for joining us uh it was so nice to have you here i appreciate your time i appreciate your patience i'm super excited that we got to interview you have you on here um please stay on the line uh we're gonna do a quick goodbye um thanks to the community for helping us with the setup because yeah let me tell you that was that beginning uh without the sound <laughs> just having having jeff talk and nobody nobody can hear you <laughs> we got there in the end and that's the important yeah, part yeah we did get there <laughs> again uh thank you to the entire community thank you to jeff um go read his articles he writes some great stuff read everybody else's articles as well especially if you want to get more into the competitive game again if you're in the seattle area come out to zulu's you get a chance to meet jeff i'm i'm there you know, almost every uh, every week or so, I skip weeks here and there. Uh, oh, and then actually, Jeff, what's the next tournament you're going to be going out to? The next big one. Oh yes, I'm going out to uh, R4, uh, the reunion tournament. That's right. In yeah. Nebraska on the 21st. Yeah, that's uh, really right. Excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you do well in there. Make us proud Thank here you. in Seattle, please. <laughs> Yeah, um, bring me back a Zach Fan uh, card if you can find one. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, coming right up, buddy. Thank you. I'll, I'll play it if we can. <laughs> yeah. Two. I'll okay. Get you two. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you, Jeff, for your time. Thank you to the community. A pleasure. I appreciate everything. Remember, everybody, you're all wonderful. You're all beautiful. You're all loved. Until next time, bye-bye.